How to clean your indoor air and surfaces tutorial. Volatile organic compounds, also known as box. This is chapter four. Be sure to check out the other chapters. What are volatile organic compounds? Box are admitted as gases from certain solids or liquids. Box include many chemicals, some of which have short and long-term adverse health effects. The concentration of many vox are so much higher indoors than outside because we are not filtrating these molecules. They are emitted from many sources including paint, building materials, electronics, even the glue from your carpet will emit vox. Vox are gas molecules. Gas molecules are much smaller than virus particles. Volatile organic compounds aroma. So not all volatile organic compounds have a scent but many of them do. So when you smell mold, that's a volatile organic compound. Some of the volatile organic compounds from mold are toxic, some of them are not. You don't always smell volatile organic compounds. This is a common misconception. Sometimes you cannot smell it. That's why we have box sensors, because these sensors can sense it. Not all box are toxic. If you look at coffee, many of the scents are listed here, and this is not toxic, this is perfectly natural. So it depends on many variables what is toxic and what is not toxic and we still don't have the full answer but i just want to clarify often they are toxic when we're discussing indoor air quality your voc air quality monitor so there are different types of vox and the technical definition changes time to time it's a little weird uh, we can measure vox in many different ways i prefer parts per billion it's the easiest number to me and we can look at the Vox standards chart. So if your total Vox, that's what the T and T Vox stands for, is less than 220 parts per billion, that means your air quality is excellent. So we want this number to be as low as possible in your home. Poor quality ionizer byproducts. So when a volatile organic compound goes through a poor quality ionizer, it will make your air worse. Your total volatile organic compounds could go up. Particles can be created from chemical reactions. Ozone can go up. Nitrogen dioxide can go up. Formaldehyde can go up. When your air gets worse, this is a sign that your ionizer is of a poor quality. And we need to make sure we use our air monitors to know that our ionizers are working. When you use a name brand ionizer, you will never have this problem. This is why I only suggest name brand ionizers with, from companies that have their own patents and their own research not these you know off the shelf ionizers from companies that just want to make a quick scent certified name brand air ionizer so when a volatile organic compound goes through a name brand ionizer your air monitor will show your air quality gets better nothing goes up we do not want anything to go up we only want cleaner air fox sensors accuracy and drifting VOC monitors range in accuracy. Some are far more accurate than others. Some VOC sensors are incredibly tiny. The built-in VOC sensors in your HEPA purifiers are usually very inaccurate. They are, I do not recommend using these sensors. In the last image, both of these air monitors use the exact same sensor. It's two different companies with the same sensor. Why does one air monitor show 475 parts per billion, another one 183 parts per billion? Because the, R, the air monitor in the back drifted. Box sensors drift and they require recalibration every once in a while. It could be once every two weeks. It takes four hours to recalibrate a box sensor. It's not difficult. You can find this information in your manual. Indoor sample T Vox measurements. In the first image, you can see a chart for Vox, what is excellent and what is unhealthy. They also show this for multiple units. It's very annoying with air quality. We use so many different units for the same air pollutants. Like I said before, I prefer parts per million, but everyone is different. In the second image, we can see Vox source rate in an occupied classroom. Most of the Vox that we are inhaling are actually come from us. We might be exhaling it, it might be coming from our clothes. It, there's a that's where most of the Vox come from. The third image shows a sample of Vox in the home and outside. So you can see a bedroom will have very high Vox. Outside could have very low Vox. It's not the same in every room in your home. The third image, excuse me, the fourth image shows Vox 
in different homes in different nations. So you can see in Turkey, for whatever reason, they have very high Vox indoors, perhaps poor ventilation, perhaps from cooking. There can be many reasons for this. This last image I really like, it shows Vox in the classroom. When students are in the classroom, Vox are very high. When there are no students, Vox are low. And it shows Vox outdoors. Vox exists outdoors. It's not just an indoor thing. Outdoor Vox. I want to stress this a little bit more. Here you can see my air monitor sitting on my windowsill outside. Those are Vox outside. And you can see in this chart, here are many of the common Vox you can find outside. This is just important to know and important to be self-aware of. Certain, certain areas, especially if you live in a city, you might have way more pollution and Vox outside. Vox off-gassing. In this first image, you can see conceptually what Vox off-gassing is. The gas molecules escape from the materials. When you purchase new shoes, for example, that new shoe smell, those are volatile organic compounds. When you're purchasing new flooring, those new, that new smell, those are volatile organic compounds. It's not always toxic, even though this image shows this. It's just that we should be self-aware of this. In this next image, this, these are um, an item I got from Amazon, and when I opened it up, it had a chemical smell. I put my Vox sensor next to it, and the Vox went up. Those are volatile organic compounds. In this next image, I'm measuring Vox from my carpet. And in the last image, I'm actually measuring Vox emitted from a carbon filter. Yes, even filters off gas. Electronics Vox off gassing. In the first image, you can see when the computer monitor was turned on, it was emitting Vox. In the second image, it shows you the list of Vox that were emitted. In the third image, which actually came from another study, just showed an example photo of how they measured this. Electronics actually emit Vox, including your cell phone. This is something to be self-aware of. Neighborly admitted Vox. You can have a neighbor from the next block over smoke outside. You can have all your windows closed and your door closed. Those Vox will still come into your home because Vox are gas molecules. They break barriers. This has happened to me. and In fact, I've even tested it to confirm it using my Vox monitor. So it's really important what neighborhood you live in in terms of your in indoor air quality. In the first set of images, you can see an air freshener emitting Vox. Sometimes these Vox are toxic. It's not something I recommend or against, but it's your choice to be self-aware of what air fresheners you use. In the second set of images, you can see the Vox release from many of the common consumer products in our homes. Again, this is just to be self-aware. This is your choice of what you want to use and not use, and often these Vox can be toxic. In the last images, you can see more Vox em uh, emissions from different types of flooring, and you can just see different types of paint emits different amount of Vox over time. So when you newly paint a room, obviously you can smell it, but a few weeks from then, you're not gonna have as much Vox emissions. Vox in public. In the first image, you can see the Vox at the gym is really high. Why? Because they stupidly use chemical cleaners. This is really bad to inhale. They should not allow this. It's just a bad idea. I really do recommend bringing your Vox monitors into your gym so you can see your own air quality. In the second image, you can see the Vox inside of a car. Older cars generally have more Vox from the engine, but these Vox are actually because I'm in the parking lot and there's just a lot of traffic going back and forth. In the third image, those are Vox in the grocery store. Yes, you can find it in the grocery store. Some grocery stores have excellent air quality. Some of them have poor air quality. In the last image is a public restroom. Those Vox come from, you can take a guess, and it's because they have poor ventilation and filtration in these public restrooms. You don't want to spend too much time in the bathroom. Otherwise, you'll be inhaling all these Vox. Human Vox emissions. So when we admit Vox, it comes from our breath, saliva, skin, feces, blood, urine. We admit Vox. This is something people need to 100% accept as an actual thing in their indoor air quality.
So we inhale Vox, we exhale Vox. They actually have some Vox sensors that can actually smell the Vox we exhale and can try to guess if we are suffering from a disease or not. So certain diseases will make you emit certain Vox. This is very, very uh, premature technology, but it's something I think is pretty cool. So when you're sick, you're gonna emit certain types of Vox. And in the future, they'll have sensors that can tell, oh, you're exhaling this, you might have this disease or this virus. Vox inhalation. When we inhale Vox, we basically have oxidative stress. Women and children may be more sensitive to Vox. It really depends on many variables. Some of us are more sensitive than others. So it's not the same toxicity, but I believe we should all be monitoring for our indoor Vox. Vox toxicity. So again, we can see with these two images, what happens when we inhale certain Vox. And this is why I'm such a big believer we need to filtrate this from our homes. Again, we might inhale Vox differently, but we're all gonna have adverse health effects. Dust infused Vox. Although I always mention Vox as gas molecules, they can also dry and deposit onto particles. So dust in our homes contain Vox. These are chemicals. These are not good for us, and we need to make sure we have a clean home, like clean surfaces and clean air to reduce the oxidative stress that we get from this. Fortunately, ions actually decompose the chemicals Vox in our dust. And here on the left, we have a chart of uh, Panasonic ionizers detoxing particles of the chemicals inside. This is a really, really, really big deal. So you can have a Panasonic, Panasonic ionizer in your room and it will kill the chemicals on your floor. Ions decompose pesticides. So chlorpyrifos is one of the pesticides ions can decompose. This is a really big deal. It's found in many fruits and vegetables. It's shown to have adverse health effects. It's used all across the nation. And it's just something that people need to be self-aware of. You can simply have an ionizer in your kitchen and it would help kill the pesticides on the surfaces. You should still rinse the fruits and vegetables afterward. Just know that your ionizer is going to help significantly with the pesticides. Ionizers also keep fruits fresh. As you can see in the chart in the bottom left hand corner, it would actually increase your vitamin C and malic acid because ionizers keep fruit fresh. Vox off-gassing in the home. We will start in the top left-hand corner. We can have Vox evaporated from our own shower water. We can have Vox emitted from furniture, from the carpet, from shoes, from our mattress. We can have Vox emitted from the trash can, from paint, from kitty litter, from the sofa. Our laundry emits Vox. It doesn't actually all get washed out when we do our laundry. Our cleaning supplies clearly emits Vox. Unwashed laundry emits Vox. Our dryer emits Vox. Cooking Vox spreading in the home. Let's say you're cooking and you have excellent stove ventilation. You're still going to have Vox in your home. As the Vox leave the area, your Vox sensor will go up. And it will keep going throughout your entire home. So as you can see here, your Vox in the kitchen would be higher than your living room because it's near the Vox emitting source and the Vox will continue to spread throughout the entire home. So if you had Vox sensors in every room, it could look like this. So when you're cooking, the Vox are spread throughout the entire home. The Vox will be highest near the source. This is very important to notate because when you're just using an ionizer in the kitchen, the Vox are still going to escape and go throughout your home. This is why I believe it's a good idea to own multiple devices. Traffic or smoking Vox spreading. It's always important to place an air ionizer near the Vox emitting source because when you place it away from the source, it takes much longer to ionize the Vox. Gas molecules spread quickly. As you can see in the first scene, the Vox are higher even though we're using the same ionizer. It's always important to leave your ionizer near the Vox emitting source. The confusing air ionizer. So sometimes your ionizer may seem like it's not working and your Vox are going up and you might not understand what's going on. So in the first scene, you're cooking with no ionizer, you have 800 parts per billion Vox. In the living room, you have 400 parts per billion Vox. In the second scene, you're cooking the exact same food 
and you have 600 parts per billion box. Now, why do you have less Vox? Because your ionizer in the living room is grabbing the air and ionizing those Vox. And you also have 200 parts per billion Vox in the living room. So if you look at the total Vox without an ionizer and with an ionizer, you'll notice you have significantly less Vox. This is very important to understand because you're not going to own a million Vox sensors and a million ionizers. So sometimes your Vox sensors won't make sense and you would, you would be like, why is it going up? It's supposed to be going down. It is going down, but you simply do not have enough ionizers. Deposited Vox. So as the gas molecule flies around your home, part of it will land on surfaces. It can be on your door, it can be on your couch, it can be on your floor, it can be on your stairs. Vox can also create particles through chemical reactions, or Vox can deposit on particles themselves. And this is the toxicity I was referring to earlier, where particles can have Vox inside them. So in terms of preferences of which ionizers I like to use for what? For air box, I like Sharp. For deposited surface box, I like Panasonic. For particles, HEPA or negative ionizer. For VOC created particulate, HEPA or negative ionizer. And VOC infused particulate, Sharp or Panasonic. So here we have three scenes of VOX inside of a home. The first scene is with no ionizers. The second scene is with one ionizer. The third scene is with two ionizers. So as you can see, the more air purifiers we own, the cleaner our air is. So if you have no ionizers, obviously you're gonna have toxic air. With one ionizer, your air quality is improved. With two, it's excellent. This is just an example. It's very important to realize the reason why we want more devices is so we have less deposited box on our surfaces. It's not just about cleaning the air, but about cleaning it quickly so it doesn't land on surfaces. Vox creating new Vox and particles. In this animation, we have exhaled Vox flying around and has chemical reactions with surfaces to create even more Vox. And those new Vox can fly around and create new particles. This is why it's very important to filtrate Vox to prevent more Vox from being created and new particles from being created. Human Vox off-gassing. So our bodies emit Vox. This is very important because these Vox are actually toxic. Now we need to acknowledge how important this is. Humans were not meant to live indoors. We we're supposed to be outside and now we are indoors in sealed homes. We are inhaling our own toxic Vox. Our body releases this as a form of detoxifying our cells and we need to air and surface filtrate these. Vox spreading in the home. So you may have an excellent exhaust fan in your bathroom but Vox will still spread in your home. I just want to give this animation as an example of how Vox can just spread. And it's important to understand this because you might want to put an ionizer in the bathroom so you don't have all these Vox all around your home. No one wants their home smelling like their bathroom. The portable ionizer. We can use one ionizer and kill all the toxic stuff in the bathroom. And the next day, we can just simply unplug it and put it in the bedroom and do the exact same thing and then put it in the kitchen, and then the living room, and then basement. These portable devices can be used in different rooms on different days or however you like to do your setup. You do not have to have a million ionizers. You can use one for this purpose at least and just keep moving it around to kill everything in your home that you don't want. That was the end of chapter four. Be sure to check out my other videos. Please let me know if you have any questions.